to me, you're one of my favorite guitarists because of your versatility, Bob, and the way that you feel stuff and the way that you ingest it. And it comes out your style. Like, I mean, anybody can, and, and I'm not one of these guys. I never listened to a Jimi Hendrix record and tried to play all along the Watchtower note for note. And why? Because there was only one Jimi Hendrix, bro. And I wasn't going to be that guy to, that's going to make it any better all along the Watchtower. I played it my way, coming through me, like Simmons used to say about me. You know, Mickey Free's a, a Jimi Hendrix innovator, not a Jimi Hendrix impersonator. So the way you play, you you could play Jeff Beck licks all day, but and Hendrix licks too. But dude, it comes through you your way. You know, I mean, is it me or are we feeling each other on that? Because you you're not like one of those copy guitar players like that went to MIT and goes all that. I hate that. But you're not that guy. Tell me about your guitar playing, man. It's am I wrong or is it or, or am I close to the way you feel when you play your acts? No, I I, th I think you, you hit the nail on the head exactly. You know that at first we absorb via watching and osmosis and mm -hmm. listening and you know mimicking and and learning. You know I learned some of Clapton solos just to understand what he was yes. playing and yes. and how he was linking the parts together, knowing where the influences were. BB King, Freddie King, Albert King, blah blah right. blah blah blah. Right. But right. you know I, I, what I would say to younger people now who ask this question uh, because they need to know at what point they're going to be their own person and not somebody who just plays other people's stuff. Yes. When, when, when you reach that point where you can just react to something and play something that is your version of all of what you've heard, totally. all of what you osmosatized, all of what you, you know, feel yes. inside your soul. Like Jimi Hendrix said, when I play, people see my, see my soul. And, and I kind of, I kind of think that that's right. I kind of think that our playing shows what's inside us. And so that first time that you know, I'm working with a young guitar player in the studio, the first time he, you know, I know you worked this out. Why don't you play something off the cuff? Yeah, man. Just go for it. Yeah, Just man. go for it. That's when that person is born. That's when that guitar player is born, when he can now oh, yeah. step oh, yeah. forward himself with his own style, his own licks, and do his thing. You know, and that's what I'm proudest of is to be able to, take all those licks that I learned and just turn them into me now with my twists and turns and the way I play them and the way I feel them. Yeah. You know, when, when we, I had known who you were through, you know, Paul and Jean from Kiss, obviously in the day, but when we kind of first met, remember, you got to go back. You were playing with Dinah Ross. Remember those days, man? Was, was that crazy? I mean, you were just so rock. You know, and that's what you did. Yeah, it was you... it was a, it was another, and I hate to use the word, but there's a lot of synchronicity when 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 people and events line up in a way that can only be described as fate yes. or synchronicity. So I'm friends with Gene Simmons. I'm working with the band, as you well know, as you did yes, yes. in various capacities. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing on some of Paul's stuff, writing some songs mm -hmm. with Gene, and then the phone rings one day, and uh, you know I knew that Gene had been going out with Diana right, Ross, right. but I didn't know that he'd be calling to say, "What are you doing today? <laughs> come down, come down to the studio. We, I need you to play a solo on Why Do Fools Fall in Love." Which turned into even more. We wound up doing, you know, the the second single, that mirror mirror thing, and then yes, yes. being on Johnny Carson show with her, performing the songs live, and and they did some shows with her, like Giant Stadium and stuff. Of it was course, crazy. It was just like, you know, so who are you playing with now, Bob? Diana Ross. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, here he is. Here he is, the rock guy. You know, he's playing with Diana Ross. That's you know, so but, cool. Yeah, but as you mentioned, you know, in your previous question and comments. Uh, the ability to be able to play anything with anybody was high on my list. And wow. Gene knew that I had played with, for instance, LaBelle mm -hmm. playing R&B yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. He knew that my vocabulary was such as a, quote, session guitar player, yeah. aside from being, you know, meatloaf's lead guitar player with my brother or playing with Dick Wagner with Tim Curry or, you know, playing with John Cale or, or Alice Cooper, right. as I did with, with, with Dick. You know, this was different. This 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 was Diana Ross, you know, and, and so it, it called upon, you know, the, the talent that, well, I can make a pop solo out of my rock licks. And as we all yeah, do, yeah. You, know, you, you, you find the way and inspiration as our guide 
I never felt uncomfortable because Jean was my friend mm -hmm. and because she was a wonderful person, I did not feel intimidated. And I remember Jean saying to me, you know, like, I, I knew you wouldn't be intimidated, that you'd just be able to play and do your thing, and that's great. And, and you know, that was part of it.